If you have a question about whether or not you can afford to practice polygyny, well, clearly you don't. You can't. You are unable to because of the decision you made five years ago like I made five years ago when I was talking to my mentor. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Coach Nadir, one of the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as one of the authors of Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. <laughs> with that being said, I'm also the coach known to help people get their shift together. So with that being said, you know, I get asked this question. How much money is needed to really practice polygyny? Do you need to be the king of a country, a sultan of Brunei? Do you need to be president of this big corporation and all this type of stuff? You'd be massively wealthy. I'm going to ask you like this. The power of questions. The power of questions. I remember sitting with a mentor and he was coming to talk to me and we were already meeting on some stuff and he had already shown me um, his financial uh, acumen. He was already doing uh, multiple five figures every single week. All right. And I had given him permission to push me because he asked for it. He said, you know what? Listen, out there, can I have permission to push you as long as it's pushing you to the bank? And I'm like, of course, no doubt. What's up? We were talking. And I don't remember what it was specifically that we were discussing, but it was uh, investing in something. It was some type of opportunity, whatever it was, but it was less than $1,000. And he asked me, you know what I thought about it? And it looked good. I'm like, yo, you know what? This makes a whole lot of sense. I just, I don't have the money right now. So he looked at me. You know, and again, I had already given him permission. So he looked at me, he said, okay. Interesting. He said, why did you choose to be here? I'm like, what? Like, what you mean? No, he said, why did you choose to be here at this time and not be able to afford it? I'm like, no, nah, I didn't choose not to be able to afford them. And the economy is kind of whack. You know, my job and this, and I got these babies, all the kind of, you know, I came up with plenty of excuses. All right. I had to blame him. He said, you know, he said, now they listen. He put his hand on my shoulder out of love. And he was like, look, <laughs> excuses are poor reasons to be useless. Why did you choose to be here and be broke at this age? How old are you? And I think I was 30 at the time. So I'm 30 years old. He said, how long have you been working? And it was over a dozen years and stuff at this time, right? As an adult, I've been working over a dozen years of my adult life. He said, okay. And let's just say it was $1,000. Even though I don't remember, let's just say it was 1000 I know it was less. And he said, um, okay, so you're 30 years old. You have a young family. You've been working over a dozen years. And you can't afford $1,000 to put something in on that you like, that you want to do? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it, it sounded crazy to hear. It's like, yo, that's a reality, right? So he put it right in my face. He said, well, why did you choose to be here? I said, what do you mean? He said, see, five years ago, when you were 25 years old, you had opportunities in your life. You had different ways to educate yourself, whether that's on investing in stocks or investing in real estate or even doing no money down, which is really popular at the time. Infomercials were on TV. He said, you know, you had five years to invest in yourself in your financial education. But whatever you did or what you didn't do more likely led you right here, right now being broke. And I'm like, true. You know, I mean, I didn't say it like that. I was just like, whoa, that's true. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing as a grown man working over a dozen years and not being able to go ahead and afford a thousand dollars to put in on something. I felt like, whoa, that, that, was, that got me, right? But it upset me enough to make me take some action because I did choose to be there. Then he said, now there, how much does your TV cost? And I'm like, I don't know, a few hundred dollars? I don't know. You know I remember vaguely saying like a couple hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars. I'm, I don't really know. He said, you know, huh? He said, no, no, no. How much does your TV cost? And I recognize he didn't say, did your TV cost? Like, how much did I purchase for? Purchase it for? He said, how much does it cost? So I'm like, I'm, what you mean? He said, well, I would estimate that your TV is probably costing you about thirty to $40,000 a year. I'm like, what? 
And then he went to explain, he said, see, the average American, according to Nielsen ratings, spends about seven to eight hours a day on TV. Seven to eight hours a day, which is crazy. Right? And I wouldn't spend that much time on TV. He said the average person, but thirty to forty thousand dollars a year because you can invest yourself. I don't care if you went to the library. I don't care if you took Think and Grow Rich and, and studied each single principle for a month out of the 13 principles. I don't care if you learn some no money down stuff, whatever it may be, even learn a different language. But it's costing you to sit back and watch other people live their lives. Watch other people take their life and live it with style while you're watching them. But you're going to work a job that you don't really like and you have a budding family that you say you really want to take care of. So he was giving me the truth and he was giving to me wrong. Like, yo, I'm like, whoa, OK. Now, again, he already demonstrated his financial acumen. He was doing, I think it was about 20 grand a week at that time. So I got it, though. He took time to meet with me as a mentor. And he said, you know, mentors don't have to be a friend. They don't. He said, you're my friend. I love you. You're my friend. We friends, stuff like that. Yes. But mentors don't have to be. They might upset you. They might rub you the wrong way in order to get you to do what you need to do to get to that next level. Because people will do more to avoid pain than they will to attempt to achieve pleasure. So I understood it. I started following some different principles. And I'm like, yo, show me. You've already done it. I'm listening. One other principle he taught me, though, he said, you know, before you come ask for advice on something specific, this is what my mentor shared with me. So now I'm really listening because now this is what his mentor shared with him. And he was earning what I wanted to earn. He said his mentor told him, don't just come to me and ask. All right. I want to know that you're serious and not just curious. I want to know that you went and researched stuff, whether you went to the library, you looked it up online. All right. You went and searched your, your books and stuff like that. You looked at some other stuff, audio tapes, whatever it may be. Show me the work that you've done to try to find the answer first. Because by you showing me that, that showing me that you're diligent and you're not going to waste my time. You just come for the easy answer. You willing to research and get at it, then you come to me. See, he was showing me how to be a leader. He was showing me how to focus on solutions instead of problems. So if you have a question about whether or not you can afford to practice polygyny, well, clearly you don't. You can't. You are unable to because of the decision you made five years ago like I made five years ago when I was talking to my mentor. If you're at a spot where you cannot afford it, it's because we chose to do other things during that time. We chose not to learn and increase our financial intelligence. The good part is that even though things may not turn around overnight, you can change direction overnight. You could become the person that's driving on the right path, on the path toward the destination you want to go versus something that you just somewhere you're going aimlessly. So I'm just reminding you, I'm just sharing with you things that my mentor shared with me that helped change my financial life, that helped increase my financial IQ, my financial intelligence quotient. Because I didn't want to be poor. One of my other mentors told me poor is an acronym. He said, you can be broke, but don't be poor now, dear. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, poor. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. That's what poor is. He said, people, market cycles come and they go. And people have excuses. But passing over opportunities repeatedly. And I immediately thought of my uncle. One of my uncles came to me. He was big in... Um, in the narcotic game in the 80s, let's say. All right, the whole Scarface era, stuff like that. He had, he had land, he had a horse, all kind of stuff, right? So yeah, he had the stuff. One day, he, he told me that, he told me a story. His attorney had caught him and several other people. All right, there's about a dozen people there. And he was like, listen, y'all doing some things that are not legal. I have some information about this company and I think you might want to consider, you know, investing and checking system out. My uncle didn't trust the attorney. He said, I need $1,000 from each of you. We can invest collectively. I'll invest it. You know, I don't know if this stuff is legal or not, but I know what he was relaying to me that his attorney called him and some other dope boys or whatever in, all right? And most of them invested except two, my uncle and one other guy. They only invested $1,000 in this company. And this company was 
revolutionizing the way that people actually saw stuff at home. They were a company that rented VHS tapes known as Blockbuster. No longer around, but their, um, I think it was a, the IPO, the initial public offering that was coming out was for their stock, which was at pennies, I guess, at the time. So my uncle sat and told me how each one of his guys that he was with, that he was in the game with, became multi-millionaires with this $1,000 investment. So when my mentor said passing over opportunities repeatedly, and my uncle told me this story just because he didn't trust his attorney, and he said he spent $1,000 on food and on other stuff, nothing per day. But he didn't trust his attorney, and he just didn't even do it. He just lost that. He passed over that opportunity. All right, and it didn't have any other one come or take advantage of any other one in his lifetime as of yet. So that's what I immediately thought of when it came to that. So how many opportunities have you passed over? I don't care if we're talking about crypto, we're talking about real estate investing, we talk about building your credit, getting business credit, we're talking about setting different things up and doing your own private bank. There's, there's many different opportunities out there. And if you study history, you study market cycles, you recognize in down cycles, it was where real wealth is usually created. So whether that be like the roaring 20s of the 1900s and then the collapse in the depression of the 30s, the many businesses and the success stories that came out that still even exist to this day. Amazing. But in down cycles, everybody get paid when cycles are going up. Everybody look like geniuses. But those are financial intelligence tend to make it when the markets go down. So with that being said, I'm not going to just carry on and on and on. But I do want to address if you're broke, it's by choice. Because we all have that free will, we all have that free choice. And if you are healthy, you have the ability, then what's the problem? And like me, the problem was me and the choices I was making to be where I didn't want to be. So if you don't want to be where you are right now, you want to be farther along or further ahead, then either something new is going to have to come in your life or something new is going to have to come from inside of you. I would suggest doing what Benjamin Franklin said. He said, pour your money, pour your purse into your mind and your mind will turn around and pour it back into your purse. Meaning invest in you, invest in your knowledge, invest in your growth so that you may grow out to having more financially, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, in all these different areas. Focus on that growth. That's the first letter in GLC is that growth. That will make every other area of life that much more fulfilling. But just know you are where you are today in your marriage, in your health, in your finances, in your spiritual life. Based on the decisions you made or the appointments you made five years ago to be right here right now. And the great part is if you don't like it, you can change direction overnight, though you might not reach the destination overnight, but you can be on the right path. So with that being said, again, I'm coaching out there. You know, you want more information on personal growth? I would suggest joining polygamymasterclass.com where I teach men how to be polygamy qualified in the many different areas and the requisites and to understand the four different stages you go through. Details are polygamymasterclass.com. Make sure you like the video, you share it. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And with that, remember, wish changes nothing, but a decision changes everything. Salam alaikum. Peace. Pardon interruption. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that you could thrive better in the community that's more supportive? Now, I already know the answer to that. But did you know that Outstanding Personal Relationships actually has a community that is supportive and where we really hang out a lot? It has a number of areas and things like, for example, I, I deal with the men in the kings and men section where we discuss a number of different men issues, whether it's religion related, parenting related, whatever it may be. This is where we communicate and connect. And as an introvert, I love the idea of an online community. <laughs> so um, we have that. And to be able to speak with like-minded people, speak with other wives, you know, wives, whether you're an incoming wife, whether you're a first wife, you're a wife, period, in general, and you only practice in monogamy, whatever the case may be, to be able to be in a community with people who understand what you're going through, understand any type of issues you have, and also being in a place where you have support from others, where it's not all over social media for everybody else to see. Yes, and it is a safe space. So if you guys want to see us or if you want to connect with us, come to our community. Indeed. And like they said, it's private, 
All right, so you don't have to worry about yourself being all over the place or all on social media, try to find the comments and go scroll. We have the subjects, we have all this type of stuff. Just go to outstandingpersonalrelationships.com, look on the top of the page, click on community. We look forward to seeing you there. Back to the video.